If you're a beginner to needle felting and you're struggling to know when your item is firm enough and when to stop stabbing, you've come to the right place, as I'm going to show you how felted your wool needs to be. Also, I'm going to share with you an experiment I did to test how different wools and needles can affect how long it takes you to get an item felted firm enough. I think you'll be surprised by the results. I was. So how do you know when to stop stabbing or when it's firm enough? You may think that these are simple, straightforward questions, but I suspect it depends on various factors. Because let's say you want to create a firm base for the body of a project. Usually in my tutorials, I tell you how many minutes I've stabbed the wool for. This will give you an idea of when to stop stabbing, but I'm always aware that this is often an estimate because I suspect that how long it takes you will vary depending on the wool that you're using and what needle you're stabbing with. Also, whether you're stabbing at the same speed as me. So to find out if this is true, I'm going to use different combinations of coarse and fine wools and needles of different gauges and put them head to head to find out the fastest or most efficient way to needle felt a shape in what I like to call the Great British Stab Off. So the four contestants have to needle felt this body shape from the template using four different variations of carded core wool, merino tops or roving wool and either a fine needle or a thick needle, stabbing them until they're felted quite firm. So the first contestant in the orange corner is using a carded Jacob wool bat, a coarse wool that's suitable for using as a core wool, and stabbing it with a fine 40 gauge triangular felting needle. The purple corner is also using carded Jacob wool, but with a thick 36 triangular felting needle, which I'm hoping will save time. The grey corner is making the body shape with a fine merino wool tops or roving, and using a fine 40 gauge triangular needle. And finally, Team Yellow is using the same merino wool tops as the grey contestant but using a thick 36 gauge triangular needle to see if that will felt faster. So to make this a fair race rather than timing the felting I will count how many times I stab the wool and check its firmness as we go along. Don't worry I'm not suggesting you count how many times you stab your wool. I'm only counting for the sake of science. This is to ensure that we're testing the wool and needle combinations only and it's not affected by my poor arm getting tired and stabbing slower. Looking at how the thick needle works on the merino tops wool compared to how the thick needle affects the coarse carded wool, you can see why many felters recommend that beginners to needle felting buy carded wool as the merino wool looks and feels like it's never going to be the right shape at the beginning, whereas the carded wool at least seems to be behaving in a way that you'd expect. But is this because I'm using a thick needle to felt the coarse wool? Well, we'll find out later how I got on using the fine 40 gauge needle on the coarse wool. But first, while they're stabbing it out, let me show you how I gauge whether I've felted the wool enough and how firm I felt my items. No doubt in my videos you'll often see me squeezing the wool as I'm going along, as this gives you the best indication of whether you've stabbed your wool enough. Knowing how firm this needs to be comes with experience, but to give you a visual idea of how firm it gets over time, let's imagine you a needle felt in the body shape out of carded wool, such as this coarse Jacob wool I'm using here. And also I'm using a needle holder with three 40 gauge triangular needles in it. Bear in mind that if you're using just one needle, it's probably going to take three times longer. After you've rolled up your wool, it will be really squishy and soft like this, as it's not been felted at all. So here I've started stabbing at my regular speed. In other words, this isn't speeded up. So if you're stabbing at a similar speed to this, then after about a minute and a half, it'll look like this when you squeeze it. Then after more stabbing for about four and a half minutes, it should give about this much. After a lot more stabbing at the same speed for 10 10 minutes. When you squeeze it, it should look like this. Fairly firm, but it still gives a bit when you put pressure on it. Don't forget it, if you're going to coat this in a coloured carded or merino wool, then it will get even firmer as you stab the coat onto it. But also remember, at the end of the day, it's up to you how firmly felted you want your items. Mine do vary a bit, but on the whole they end up this firm. As you can see, the Pikachu and the rabbit don't give very much when I squeeze them, but the cat is a little bit softer. The downside to leaving them very soft is that when you apply the outer layer of face details, it can cause the eyes or mouth to sink into the head and make it harder to keep the correct shape of your item. This gives you an idea of how firm it needs to be. But what if you're using just merino roving wool or tops? Or are using thick needles, not fine? Well, let's see how our combinations of wool and needles are getting on in our great British stab off. As I felted the four variations, there were a few things I noticed and a few surprises. The yellow combination continued to prove hard work. By stabbing the merino wool with a coarse needle, it felt more difficult to shape the wool, and each stab left a very large indent. After 800 stabs, which took me about 5 or 6 minutes, I gave them all a squeeze, but none of the combinations were firm enough yet. 
So in the name of felting science, I did a lot more stabbing and counting and eventually got to the stage where I felt three of them were firm enough. But at this point, I felt like the race wasn't really finished because they've not all reached the same point. If the goal was to felt four brown bodies, then two of them would need to be coated in brown wool. Also, one of them didn't feel quite as firm as the others. So I continued to stab that one for longer, counting all the stabs along the way. For the two carded wool versions, I took some of the same merino wool tops and wrapped it round them, attaching them using using the fine 40 gauge triangular needle and counting how many more stabs this took. If we're looking at how many stabs it took to get an item firm enough and brown, then the results are in fourth place is the orange combination of coarse wool stabbed with fine needle for 2,500 stabs initially and then a further 3,000 stabs to coat it evenly with the brown merino wool. In third place comes the purple combination which was a core wool which only needed 2,000 stabs with a thick needle to get it firm enough but then took a further 2,500 stabs to coat it in brown merino wool. And in second place came the yellow combination of merino tops with a thick needle as it didn't need coating but took 3,000 stabs with a thick needle and a further 1,000 stabs with a fine needle to get it as firm as the others. Which I was surprised by to be honest as I thought the thicker needle might have felted the merino tops more than the fine needle but it seemed to have worked less efficiently which means in first place is the grey combination of merino tops and fine needle, only taking 3,000 stabs in total to get a brown firm felted item. I really didn't see that coming. But let's have a closer look at how smooth the finish is on them all. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Personally, I think the finish on the purple carded wool using a thick needle to start with, then using a fine needle to apply the coat of brown gave the smoothest finish. With the two that are 100% merino tops, the yellow and the grey, turning out to be the bumpiest of the four. But I wouldn't want to leave any of them like this, so I'll probably continue to stab all four lightly all over with a fine needle to get a much smoother finish. So what have I learnt from this experiment? Well if you're felting coarse wool it will be quicker to use a thick needle to shape it and if you're felting with just merino fine wool then using a fine needle will felt it more efficiently. Personally I'll be sticking to using core wool with a thick needle even though the merino wool took less stabs as I find the core wool easier to shape and it's less expensive than the merino wool. Also I found it easier to get a smooth finish coating the core wool with merino wool and it will be easier still if I use coloured carded wool. I hope this video has helped you to know when to stop stabbing but this alone won't help you to get your felted item looking amazing. There's actually one more thing that you have to combine with this if you really want to get your finished item looking great and in this video I'll not just show you what that is but I'll share five tips to help you master it and be able to felt whatever you can imagine. I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. Thanks for watching.